Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and today I wanted to talk about some of my recent reads. Um, these are reads that I feel like I really haven't addressed that much um, in previous videos of mine that I just wanted to recap and let you guys know my thoughts on them. Um, and then also I wanted to cover what I'm currently reading um, because I'm loving what I'm currently reading. And so, yeah, this will be kind of like a wrap up for essentially September and October. <laughs> um, I didn't read that much. Um, it was it was a slow period for me, but um, I did manage to end up reading five books that I wanted to talk about with you guys. So um, the first one is one that I read while I was in London and finished on the plane back from London. And um, that is The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. So yes, this cover is so pretty. I love it. Um, I talked about this in my London um, haul that I did. So I think this one's probably been talked about the most out of the five. But anyways, um, <laughs> I'll just recap. So I ended up giving this book five stars. I loved it. Um, so it's basically the story of Maggie Tolliver, who is a um, girl who grows up in a family where she is very much unloved in a way, um, underappreciated is like super obvious. Um, but she's, she's loved by her dad because um, he kind of has this, uh, he knows that she's very much like him. And so um, anyways, they kind of have a cute relationship, but um, the main relationship that's focused on in this book is the relationship between Maggie and um, her brother, Tom. And Tom is the most flighty, uh, dramatic brother who one day will love her to the end of the earth and the next day um, hates her guts, wants her to leave the house, um, never wants to talk to her again. And um, so it leaves her very vulnerable, I would say. And so this is a um, childhood, like growing up story. So it goes from childhood, adolescence to um, Maggie in womanhood, actually. And what ends up happening is she ends up meeting um, and befriending a, um, a schoolmate of Tom who ends up being a sworn enemy to both Tom and her dad. And so um, it's kind of the story of how that goes down. Basically, um, it, it tears apart their, their family. It tears apart Maggie from um, doing what she would love to do versus being loyal to her family. And so, um, yeah, it's a huge retrospective novel about George Eliot, actually. Um, George Eliot expressed that this was her most uh, biographical book she read or she wrote. Um, and it, it feels that way. It feels super, super personal. So if you want a real insight into kind of how George Eliot um, maybe dealt with some of these issues, um, she also had a really close relationship with her brother that was tumultuous, um, uh, especially when she started, I guess, uh, I read the back of the book where it talks about George Eliot's life and um, she ends up being a woman that's, uh, like scandalous I guess is what you would say she she just had tons of scandals um and people esteemed her as one who uh was not keeping the standards of the day I guess and so um her family ends up disowning her at one point um it's very sad <laughs> the standards for women that back then are uh, terrible. So anyways, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book, especially after learning all of that about George Eliot. I highly recommend. Um, I've read Middlemarch as well by her. Really love that book as well. 
Um, this is definitely a different vibe and it was a lot easier to read. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes towards the end. Um, but yeah, so I ended up giving this five stars. Okay, so then the next book that I ended up reading was also a book set in London. <laughs> this book was set in England, but um, this one is specifically set in London because I was kind of coming off that that high. And so I decided to pick up this book, A Curious Beginning by De Deanna Rayborn. Um, so this is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell series. And uh, wow, this was so fun. This was such a romp. Um, so it's set in Victorian London time, so in the late 1800s. Um, it focuses on Veronica, obviously, who is a, um, her trade is, she's a professional butterfly. Uh, how do you say that? She, she catches butterflies and like, um, like, puts them on display, essentially, if that makes any sense. Um, they went into a lot of detail, actually, about her career, um, which I thought was really, really interesting. But yeah, so she uh, ends up meeting, um, by very weird circumstances, this man who um, basically tells her her life is in danger and she needs to come with him right away. And... Um, she deems him to be trustworthy and um, a good guy and so she goes with him and they go to London and then the next the next scene you know that he's dead and it explains this in the back of the book so I'm not spoiling anything so he ends up getting murdered and so um, she's stuck with his um, trusted colleague whose name is Stoker and um, Basically, he asks Stoker uh, to guard her with his life. And so um, it's all about the relationship between those two, between Veronica and Stoker. It's a super slow burn. It's all, and then obviously it's a mystery. So they're trying to figure out who's after her, um, why this man was murdered. I can't remember his name but he's a German Baron. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but um, why he was murdered and um, what they can do about it. So yeah, it's a huge, just fun, um, I don't know. It was, just a, it was just a super fun story. I really enjoyed it. The ending, however, was wild. <laughs> um, it ends up, there's a huge reveal at the end that I was like, this is so out there. This is so unbelievable. Um, so that brought it down for me in the end. But um, yeah, I still ended up giving it a four star. I really liked it. So I'm eager to pick up the next one, the second one in the series. Um, I think it's called A Perilous Undertaking. Um, yeah, so we'll see when I can get that. But um, yeah, I've really, really enjoyed this series so, so far. So yeah, this was a great one. Okay, so then the next book was on audio, um, also set in London. <laughs> so um, this is the Austin Playbook by Lucy Parker. So this is the fourth book in the London Celebrities series, which I have listened to all of these on audio. I love the audio narration. Um, but yeah, I really loved the first book. The first book was like mind-blowingly great to me it was uh it's called act like it um and so i've been continuing with this series none of them have quite hit that that threshold that the first one did um but this one was still enjoyable um it was the story about um two characters who uh one of them he ends up he is a professional critic actually. So if you guys didn't know, this whole story, this whole series revolves around the London, London West End theater. Um, and so whether it's between actors, between, um, there's one that's like a make a professional makeup artist and an actress. There's, um, another one that's, um, 
an actor and an actress that are both huge headliner names. Um, but this one was a critic and an actress. So um, basically when, what ends up happening is um, she is very dismayed by um, some of the critiques she's gotten recently. Um, she's been very uninspired and uh, he's one of her harshest critics actually. And so what ends up happening is they go, um, he, he owns this large um, estate essentially outside of London and that's where they host this uh, TV event. So actually it's not what, what it is, is it's a play, but it's being broadcasted. And so um, his brother is in charge of it. And he's kind of like begrudgingly going along with it. And she ends up getting casted for it. And so um, their paths collide there. And the, it's kind of like a forced proximity situation because um, with it being a TV broadcast, it's a one-time event. And so they have to rehearse on, on scene. Um, and stay at this estate. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The the main hero is compared to, well, so he's definitely like a Slytherin and they talk about that a lot actually, how he would be a, in the Slytherin house. Um, yeah, very kind of grumpy, serious, um, headstrong. And uh, she's a Hufflepuff, that's for sure, <laughs> but um, he also, like, is described as looking like Lucius Malfoy, which I thought was awesome because I could just totally picture that. Um, anyways, so there was just some funny things that I really enjoyed about this book. It was pretty cliche, I would say, and, uh, it didn't, like, overly impress me, but it was still, you know, it met my expectations and I really enjoyed it. So I ended up giving it a three and a half stars. Um, I highly recommend this series, you guys, especially if you're into theater at all. Uh, oh my gosh, it's just perfect. It talks about all of the behind the scenes action and um, some of the trials that real life professionals in this field have to go through. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So, okay, so then the next one um, I talked about in my moving vlog, but I never actually talked about my thoughts, which I felt really bad about. Um, so I thought I would cover here and that is Demelza by, um, Winston Graham. So this is the second book in the Poldark series. Uh, yeah, I read the first book, um, pr in recently in this year and, um, really wanted to pick up the second one and finally did. And it was such a delight. Oh my gosh. Um, I was so glad to get back into this world, um, back with these characters. I really love Demelza as a character. Um, she is just so, um, she's stubborn, but she's also just so kind, so willing to love. Um, and anyways, this is a real focus on um, marriage and like how to adjust to your partner and um, kind of the trials that newly married folk all deal with I would say um, it was very relatable to me honestly like um, some of the things that go they go through in this book I'm like yeah like something similar happened with me and my husband and so I really love that because you don't get a lot, I feel like you don't get a lot of books that focus on like, um, you know, what happens after you get married and how your relationship develops after that, um, which is such a huge part of anyone's life if you're married. But yeah, so anyways, um, I really loved this. Uh, I also really liked the... Um, the portrayal of all of the business and economics that were going on in the story. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people maybe get bored by or it's just kind of overlooked, but I found it so fascinating. And um, the the business acumen that Ross Poldark has is really um, astute. This That's a lot of words, but <laughs> um, I just admire um, his 
his tenacity and wanting to fight for um, workers' rights and um, for uh, basically it's a it's a talk about small independent businesses versus these large um, multi national type of companies who come in and try to take over. And so, yeah, I just thought it was really, really cool. And I'm really eager to pick up the third one. I own it and it's on my shelves. Jeremy Poldark, I believe. Um, and I also own the fourth one. So we'll see where this story goes. I, I can't wait. Um, so yeah, I really love this. I gave it four and a half stars. Okay, the next book that I finished was on audio as well. Um, and that is Slightly Scandalous by Mary Balog. So, uh, you guys know that I've been slowly working my way through this series. Sorry that there's like weird light happening with the blinds. Maybe I can adjust it. There we go. Um, so yeah, I've been making my way through this series and, uh, this is the third book in the series and wow. Oh my gosh. I loved it so much. Um, I, gave it four and a half stars, which is a pretty high rating for me with romance, especially. Um, and basically the reason why is the, the character dynamic between, um, Freya and Josh, the two who are the, the main hero and heroine of the story, uh, was just delightful. Um, Josh is a very fun loving, um, lighthearted, always looking to just have a good time type of character, um, never takes anything that seriously. And it's kind of, it, it rubs Freya the wrong way because he goes through some stuff in this book that is very serious. And she's like, why are you not more distressed about this? <laughs> but um, Freya, on the other hand, she is uh, super headstrong, um, to a fault, honestly, and uh, just super passionate, loves her family, and there's a lot of family um, focus in this. Uh, the Bedouin family is the, it's kind of like Bridgerton where you have this big family who each book is a separate sibling's love story. And in this book, there's a lot of um, Bedouin characters involved, and so, uh, you just get to see the di the dynamic with all of them and um, and anyways, it was just so good. I loved it. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend this series. The first one and the third one so far have been the best to my estimation. Um, the second one, Slightly Wicked, was like, it was okay, but it just wasn't my favorite love story. So uh, I'm really eager to continue on. Um, what is the next one even called? Slightly... What is it? Wicked, scandalous, sinful, maybe? I feel like that's the next one. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. But um, anyways, yeah, highly recommend, especially on audio, narrated by Rosalind Landor, my favorite. And um, yeah, it was just a delight. So there's that one. Okay, and then um, is that it? Yeah, that's it for um, my wrap up. But I also wanted to talk about the the three books I'm in the middle of currently. So let me grab those. So I am reading two physical and one audio. So um, I'll talk about the audiobook first. I'm reading Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. So this is the first book in the Maisie Dobbs series and I am so enjoying it. Oh my goodness, it is so good on audio especially. I've really enjoyed the narration. Um, and the thing that I'm really loving about this book right now is um, the historical setting. So it's set in London pre-World War II. So uh, it's 1929. Got it. I know like as the story goes, it gets closer and closer to the war. So that will be very interesting and I'm really excited. Um, but yeah, so Maisie serves in the war herself and then um, she ends up being trained. Um, she's like an apprentice essentially to this private detective. Um, it hasn't really gone into that much detail about that yet, but 
Um, she's just started this new private investigations business and um, she has her first case going right now and she's working on um, all the intricacies that are involved with it. And it, at first it seems very simple, but as, as she digs deeper, she realizes this is way more than it seems. And I really have enjoyed um, getting to know Maisie herself. Um, she is a really, really fun character who I admire so far. And anyways, um, I'm eager to see where this story goes and where this series goes. I can already tell it's going to be one of those series that I am very eager to continue on with. So yeah, thank you to anyone who has recommended this series to me. You guys were totally right. It's right up my alley and I am just so enjoying it. So yeah, <laughs> if you guys can't tell, I am reading like all the British books, <laughs> like all the London set or like British authors. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just hooked on it right now. So loving my time. Uh, okay. So that's the audiobook I'm in the middle of. So then my two physical books, um, I talked about this on Instagram. I've been talking about it a lot, uh, but I wanted to talk about it here too. So I'm in the middle of Anne of the Island by Ella Montgomery, the third book in the Anne series. Um, I just love this cover. I keep showing it off, but I can never get enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm about halfway actually. So I am reading 50 pages a day in this um, is kind of how I'm pacing myself. So it's been such a delight to get back into this series, you guys. I know I've been talking about why, how I want to continue on, and I just haven't yet. And so I'm so glad I finally just did it <laughs> because just reading the first chapter was so... Um, it's a very bittersweet chapter. It's all about how Anne and Diana are um, going to be separating and Anne is going off to college and how it's a very bittersweet moment for her because she's excited to to go on and um live her dream and her life but she has to leave all of these friends and and her home green gables um behind and so uh yeah it was just it made me think of how i felt when i um left home for the first time and i didn't even go that far the college i attended is actually um, 15 minutes away from my house. So um, I did end up getting an apartment, um, a dorm, like on, on the campus grounds because I did want to move out. Um, but it was still, yeah, it was still just kind of sad to actually leave home. Um, so I could relate to that. And then the other thing that I'm really loving is uh, the tension between Gilbert and and Anne, oh my gosh, especially because you know how head over heels Gilbert is um, with Anne. And there's just so many little moments in this book, especially towards the beginning, where you can tell he's like trying to get her um, on board as well. And she is resisting <laughs> with all of her might. And it's so frustrating, but it's just so good. <laughs> um, so, and I know his proposal is coming soon and that'll be sad but um he'll get there in the end we all know <laughs> uh but yeah so I've been loving 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 this book and particularly to the experience of reading it with this vintage edition has been really enjoyable because um the font is like very um you can tell it was like done by a typewriter kind of and then uh the the pages are yellowed and it smells old so it's just a whole it's just a whole experience <laughs> but there's that book and then the last and final book i'm gonna talk about with you guys today that i'm reading right now is the winter sea by susanna kearsley i know guys i was supposed to read this in march with all of you that join me um, on my Discord to read this book, which I feel so bad about. I know that there's a couple books on there that I haven't got to. Um, mainly it's just because either life got too crazy for me, um, I just wasn't in the mood in the end for it, and I just like 
was killing me inside to like, want, you know, pick up a book that I didn't want to read. Um, yeah, just a very variety of reasons why. But I'm, I'm finally in the mood to read this book and I'm so enjoying it. Um, I'm not that far. I think I'm like 50 pages or so, 60 pages in. Um, but wow, the writing has been amazing. And then the story itself, um, it's swapping between current day and um, actually like ja Jacobite revolution time frame is when this is set as well. And you guys know how much I love uh, Outlander. And so just like it rehashing these events again for me and like um, having a different story set in that time has been so fun. Uh, so yeah, I'm really eager to continue with this. Basically what my reading uh, plans are or like my schedule is like I read 50 pages of this book every night. It doesn't take me long. It's super quick. And then with any remaining time, I read this. So yeah, we'll see how long it takes me. It's a rather thick book, so it'll probably take me all month. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just been so enjoyable. So continuing with this for sure. But yeah, that is all of the books I've read recently and the, the ones I'm reading now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and uh as far as like future video plans go, um, my parents are coming into town to have Thanksgiving and celebrate Thanksgiving at, at our house, our new house. And so um, I'm definitely just kind of going to be um, focusing on that, focusing on my family. So um, I don't know how many videos are going to be posted <laughs> after this, but um I, I am going to try, I'm playing around with the idea of like how I can do vlogmas, but in a realistic way for me, <laughs> um, because doing a vlog a day would be insane. I, I do not have the, the, um, editing willpower to do that. <laughs> uh, editing just takes too long for me. So I'm trying to think if like, I do like a three, vlogs or three a day vlog situation where like maybe I not three a day but like three days and then post the vlog or something to do with vlogmas um I'm playing around with it you guys I have advent calendars I want to show that one of them is tea one of them is books um and I I just think it could be really fun so we'll see uh we'll see what I come up with but um, let's just wrap this video up. I've been going on and on now. Um, please like and comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!